My name is Umayma Al Husseini. I'm from Egypt, and I'm the director and uh, tourism counselor at the Egyptian Embassy. Actually, I'm a graduate of business administration. I got my master's degree in journalism. I used to work uh, at the press office. I mean, in Egypt, the Egyptian press office with the Ministry of Information, and then I moved to tourism in '93. Uh, I became. Uh, tourism counselor in New York from 93 and I was back in 2008 to serve as the spokeswoman of the ministry for four years and then here in London. We do actually promotion, mainly promotion of uh, for Egypt from the UK market. I'm in charge of the UK market and Ireland and uh, we do this in different forms and schemes. Uh, Egypt uh, is an unmatched country with with a very diversified tourism product. Uh, we've been weathering too many storms lately, uh, but always proved to be resilient. And I'm very lucky to be serving in that market because the British market has always been very supportive to us. And even in the very bad times, they never pulled out and they still send their, their people because they are confident in the destination. We market it in different ways, whether through direct advertising or uh, through uh, uh, cooperating with our tour operators, in, uh, also in advertising. Uh, we market it through PR and we market it at times actually as niche markets, like what we had here. I mean, this was the first uh, country ever, I mean, when we had the Red Sea Riviera on its own. Uh, to market it uh, for the for the Red Sea, and then we market the culture, tourism on its own. So we have different schemes. I mean, more or less of uh, of marketing our destination here, and depends actually on the market where you are marketing your destination. Like in the States, for example, I mean, it was mainly uh, cultural tourism, not leisure. Here, the majority is leisure, almost 80% is, is leisure. So it really depends, I mean, which market you're serving in that you, that you market the destination. But we market it because we have a very diversified uh, tourism product, actually. The ingredients are uh, ample. Uh, we have the safari, uh, we have the adventure in the desert, uh, we have the western, the oasis, the, the, the sea sun, and then we have the history actually of the world so it's um, it is really a very intriguing destination back home they were a bit reluctant you know on the online marketing and so forth and then when the whole world actually is doing it we can't just be left behind so now we are mainly relying on online marketing we, we do the traditional i mean in newspapers and magazines and we do workshops for travel agents but now even the educational programs that we have for travel agents are online for the U.S., it was mainly senior citizens who were very interested in culture, plus those who have retired and they have the money to go and do it. In the U.K., for example, no, it's a family. We, we, we target families, we target young people, I mean, you know, who want to go and relax at the beaches. And uh, many, many Brits, by the way, they do have properties in the, in the, in the Red Sea, both in Hurghada and Martha, in Marsa Alam and in uh, Sharm el Sheikh actually, so they have their own properties and they spent half of the year there and half of the year here. So it really, it really depends. The fees competition and the prices are the main determinant actually of, of, you know, how people are going, you know, everybody has been going through this economic crunch and, and the, the, you know, the economic problems, I mean, that the whole world had. So now, I mean, the consumer is getting to be very much sensitive as to the price of the of the destination more than anything else. Uh, another challenge actually is that we do have, I mean, especially from this market, is the departure tax. The departure tax has risen drastically. So for a family of four, say, I mean, who are leaving for Egypt, they pay around 260 or 270 pounds only in taxes, other than the, than the uh, uh, ticket prices. So this is a big challenge for us because we are considered, I mean, more than a four-hour destination. So we're just a long haul for here, which is not really, I mean, the case and we've been struggling back and forth, I mean, with the finance department here and with the transportation department, I mean, just trying to to find uh, a way, I mean, you know, to, to, to relax on that a bit.
We had a very successful outdoor campaign, I mean, during the past uh, in the WTM, and I think we did very well with it. And uh, it was also f only for the Red Sea. And then in December, when the when the um, uh, advisory by the FCO was relaxed for Luxor and Aswan, we did one specifically for Luxor and Aswan. And I think I mean these were uh, these were very successful. But more or less, I mean my 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 really pride was in. Um, I was very lucky when I was in Cairo office. I used to ask her Miss Margaret Thatcher, and then I escorted Princess Diana on her visit, yes, to to Egypt. So I was somehow, I mean, always you know fascinated with the with the with England and with the with the culture, with the history, and uh, I was really very lucky. I mean, that my job got me. I mean, to meet all those great people. God bless their souls. I am in love with Aswan. Aswan is a very serene city, I mean, overlooking the Nile, it's, you have the Elephantine Island, I, I, I love it, I love its people, and um, uh, so that's my number one, uh, honestly, that's my number one destination, my number two destination is Alexandria. Yeah, I love Alexandria. I love the Med. I love the Red. I mean, we have we have all the the, the, the seas, you know, surrounding us, and it's a really a great destination. 